I'm Gary, also known as the Solar Bus Guy, and we are celebrating Vermont Energy Independence Day. I thought it would be a great opportunity to show you what I do with the solar bus. Here we have our solar powered water fountain. It's the simplest type of solar energy system because there's no batteries or anything. Whenever the sun shines on the solar panel, it, it powers this uh, little pump down there. It's a, actually just a bilge pump that's commonly used for boats. Yeah, it's really sensitive right now because the sun is behind some trees and I really have to hold the panel up high. So this is our solar oven. One of our favorite displays because we usually bake cookies in it and give them away. Right now, it's almost five o'clock, I think, and it's uh, you know mid-March, and we're still getting 150 degrees in this oven, and it isn't even really tilted at the, at the angle it should be. So you can imagine how quickly and how hot it gets on a nice sunny day. And we've, I've baked every, everything you can imagine in here, from baked potatoes to bread to you know a big pot of stew, frozen pizza. Kids love this one. It's a solar powered model train set. And again, it's very simple. It's a solar direct system. There's no batteries or anything. We have a solar panel directly connected to a commonly available model train set. And instead of plugging it into the wall, and usually there's a transformer that changes the energy from the power company to what the train set wants, but this particular one works really well just directly. I just bypass or I got rid of the transformer and we just connect it directly to a solar panel. It, this is a 10 watt solar panel, and even in this kind of uh, hazy sun, it, it's, uh, Thomas is going pretty fast. Now, if I point it right at the sun, he moves a little faster. It, if I turn it away, he slows down, and he'll even stop if I turn it completely away. And uh, it's a very simple system. I'm gonna take the same solar panel right now, and just disconnect it from Thomas there and I've got a little radio. I'm just connected in there where the batteries normally are but instead we have the solar panel. Here we got AC-DC going right now, not really my favorite band but to each his own I guess. I don't know if you can hear it. Just another way people can learn and see because you know I find that they don't really teach this kind of stuff in schools and people have a lot of misconceptions and they think that you know we're waiting for solar panels to get more efficient and and things like that. But when they when they see the, the fountain and the train set and the radio and everything, they realize that hey, these these solar panels actually work pretty good right now. This is the solar bus itself. Um, I've had it since 2003, and it just grew out of my uh, passion to show people and uh, educate the public about the uses of solar energy. There's four large solar panels on the roof, and each one of those solar panels produces about 90 watts of energy when the sun is shining full. I've figured out that I could power a moderate-sized concert for about 12 hours straight just on these batteries without any um, energy coming in from the sun. These batteries um, that we use on the bus are 6-volt batteries, and they're also, the type of batteries they are are called golf cart batteries because they're typically used in electric golf carts and they work really well with solar energy systems too because they um, can take a what they call a deep cycle meaning you can take out up to 80 percent of the energy that they store on a regular basis and cycle it that far down a lot and it doesn't shorten their lifetime. Uh, we can run you know 12 volt appliances like people have cigarette lighter plugs in their car and they charge up their cell phones. The inverter takes the energy from the batteries and it converts it into regular 120 volt AC power so we can plug in stage uh, speakers and amplifiers and all kinds or movie projectors or whatever it is. And the, the other things we have here are um, just basically monitoring equipment so we can see how much energy is left in the batteries, we can see how much energy is coming in from the panels, make sure everything's working. What that does is it prevents us from overcharging the batteries because if the batteries are full and the sun is still shining and it um, the panels kept trying to put more and more energy into the batteries that would actually damage them. Other than that, we just have a lot of uh, room for people to sit down and enjoy themselves. And sometimes we have a whole big crew of people coming to help set up for big events. And other times, it's just me. So right now, we just have a light bulb plugged in there. We don't have any vacuum cleaners or big energy hogs. But if there's any doubters out there, um, I'll just turn it on just to prove to you that solar energy really works. It's a lot of fun going on road trips. 
uh, especially when we're running on vegetable oil. And this is a big bus. It burns a lot of fuel. It would be kind of hypocritical if I was driving around to events and, you know, burning gasoline. Two or three restaurants in the Burlington area are nice enough to give me their waste used vegetable oil. After that, I have to filter it because there's big, there's chunks of French fries in there and things like that. What I have here is a 50 gallon barrel where I just cut two holes in the top and I have uh, these sock filters. They call them sock filters in there. So I can pour the dirty oil into the filter and then it, it goes through the filter and it, um, inside of here is 50 gallons of clean vegetable oil. There's this electrical heater, band heater down there that I can turn on in really cold weather and it heats up the vegetable oil and allows the, the filtering process to happen a lot faster. And uh, I have to turn it on when it's really cold out, otherwise I wouldn't be able to even pump the fuel out. And that's what this is, just a hand crank pump drive my car or the bus up and uh, put this right into the tank. I get approximately the same mileage that I do with regular diesels. Actually, Rudolf Diesel, back in 1903, when he demonstrated at the World's Fair, he had it running on peanut oil. One of my neighbors just gave me a bunch of their vegetable oil. I think it was from last Thanksgiving when they were cooking a turkey or something like that. There's a tire place I take the bus whenever I need a new tire and the guy says, uh, he doesn't like working on my bus because uh, it makes him hungry when I drive in there. The idea is we have to add a second tank because we have to start up the engine on something other than vegetable oil. And once the engine is hot, then we can flip it over to vegetable oil. These lines right here are coming off the radiator. And we just basically added an extra loop onto the radiator of hot water. And this hot water is being pumped over to the vegetable oil tank and it heats up the vegetable oil. And then once the vegetable oil is heated up enough, I flip a switch up on the dashboard and then we run on vegetable oil. And um, right here you can see this is uh, the, the vegetable oil filter right here. This is the, the, fil the oil coming in, goes through this filter, and then right up here is the valve where I can, uh, it actually switches between the vegetable oil and uh, the main fuel tank, which as often as possible we have filled with biodiesel and then this thing makes it so the oil that's coming through here is actually going into the motor and this is right here the main fuel line you can see there's two going in this is the main tank this is the vegetable oil tank and this is the one coming out of this valve and this goes right into the motor and that's it sometimes we run on vegetable oil and occasionally, we try to do it as little as possible. We have to run on a little bit of diesel. So whatever we happen to be running on at the particular time, we put the appropriate bumper sticker on there. It's really just kind of like a hobby of mine. Um, technically, I did have to you know, register it as a business because when I go to an event, sometimes I sell just you know, bumper stickers and I have solar bus t-shirts and I try to recoup some of the the cost, it actually costs a lot of money to keep this bus rolling. Like I had to buy a, a new tire for the front this uh, last year and a, one tire is, alone is $350. So uh, it's uh, not a non-profit, um, but it, what I say it's a no-profit because I don't make any money off of it. I just try to break even and over the years I've finally gotten to the point where I pretty much do break even. But um, I do have plans to take it to the next level and uh, I'm actually in the process of filling out all the paperwork to become a nonprofit, and I have a board of directors of people that are really interested in helping um, bring this thing to the next level. And what that involves is uh, what I, we're calling it is going beyond the bus, because while the bus itself uh, is, when it's on wheels, it makes it very, it's very flexible for us to take to places, but it's also a little confining because there's only one bus. So we want to set up like educational displays in permanent places. Like we're actually uh, already started working on a project to put solar panels on the roof of uh, the band shell in Battery Park in Burlington so that every concert that's there throughout the whole summer will be solar powered, not just the ones that we bring the bus to.